This is the new Ace Beam X75 with nearly 80,000 lumens coming out of 12 XHP 17.2 LEDs and almost 20,000 lumens sustainable output. This is the most impressive flashlight I have ever had in my hands. With amazing performance, sustainable output, innovative cooling design with air duct, copper heatsink and functional handle, I think this flashlight in this particular price point beats every other manufacturer when it comes to portable handheld searchlight. Welcome to the review of the Ace Beam X75. Hello YouTube! Flashlight enthusiast here. And finally, here it is, the Ace Beam X75. The most powerful flashlight in the history of this company. 80,000 lumens with revolutionary air duct heat dissipation system and intelligent cooling fan. Interested? Stay with me. The package truly looks premium and you definitely get what you're paying for, all right? So here is the standard modern Ace Beam box with this white labeling and orange accents. Here we do have labeling of the version. As you can see, we only have options of 6500K and 5000K, but as you know, there is also an XHP 70.3 high intensity version coming in away. All right. The box is magnetic, which also gives you a premium feel. And when you open it, you get the bunch of warnings and blah, blah, blah. Of course, beware that this is not a toy and play with it responsibly. This flashlight will accumulate a lot of heat and just beware of it. All right. You cannot fool the physics. It is compact. It is powerful. So just be careful. With that being said, let's see what we've got in the box. Obviously, first things first, you've got the flashlight well presented here in this molded foam. When it comes to include accessories, Ace Beam actually got you covered, all right? So let's see what we've got inside. First things first, the manual in English and Chinese. Be sure to read this one because it contains all useful information on how to safely operate this beast. Your warranty card, high quality USB C to USB C cable, really good looking wall adapter. This is the European version, obviously, with just single Type C power delivery output. This is the 65 watt charger, mind you. I think this is the nice gesture from Ace Beam to offer such powerful wall adapter in their set. Mind you, you can also choose the 100 watt charger as an accessory while ordering X75. To make the charging even faster. Additional accessories. So we've got two O-rings, one hex range, four screws and some rectangular O-ring. I'm not sure what it is for, but it is there. Last but not least, another box. What does it contain? That is something I totally didn't expect. This is the spare fan for their innovative handle. Even when something happens with the fan, you've got the spare one, you can service it by yourself, not have to send the flashlight to Ace Beam. I really appreciate it. Oh God, this thing is huge. All right, before operating, make sure you remove the dust proof cover from the lens. This is one of the most pleasant things to do with this flashlight. And also remove the insulation film from the battery pack because without it, you won't make the first move, which is turning on the flashlight. Okay, here we go. Remove those nasty little things. Now we are fully operational. Before playing with this gorgeous beast, make sure that it is set in the right mode because it does not get fully charged from the factory, this one. And the second thing that it comes in the eco setting rather than the power setting from the factory. So before playing with this one, make sure you switch to power mode because otherwise the performance will be highly limited. Never too much warning signs, I guess. The charging port is hidden behind the tail cap, so it's fully waterproof and the port is also protected from dust. Ah, and this is what I really appreciate about Ace Beam. No bullshitting the customers with their barrel chargers, proprietary chargers, etc, etc. No, 
plain USB-C charging port with support of 65 watts charging and even 100 watts charging uh, if you have the adapter all right you can charge this flashlight with any I repeat any USB-C charging source so basically you can even charge it with 5 volt charger but it would take forever I don't recommend this one but uh, you can use any other 60, 65 volt or even 100 volt charger as you please. You don't have to use the one included in the set. Quite nice, don't you think? We've got plenty of charging status indicators here as you can see right on the screen when you plug it in. You've got first the red indicator, then the blue indicator which shows you that the power deliver or fast charging is in progress. And when the charging has been finished, you've got green LED indicator displaying. You also have the reset switch here uh, in case the battery pack starts to malfunction in any way. And the charging is really fast on this one. With the included 65 volts charging, I got around 1 hour and 24 minutes to the full charge after testing this one to the full depletion. So basically, it is quite brilliant. Ah, did I mention the power bank feature from this one? Yes, in case of emergency or if you need that, you can also plug it in here. So let's enter the protocol detection for the power bank feature of the ASIM X75. As you can see, we've got plenty of different options here, uh, including the power delivery function. So yeah, up to 63 watts charging uh, means that you have really a great power bank inside of the search and rescue flashlight. Let's see what protocols the included wall adapter supports. Let's plug the tester in. So again, plenty of options, quality wall adapter, with 65 volts charger. Enough of marketing bullshit, guys. You know me, I'm a practical user and always try to find out fully what the flashlight is all about. And let me tell you, once I saw the initial specs of the ASIM X75, I was overwhelmed. You know, not only was it the most impressive output-wise when it comes to ASIM flashlights, but also it looks very compact and powerful and this innovative cooling system just blew my mind, all right? And let me tell you, once it arrived and I tested it for a while, I can definitely tell that it didn't disappoint me. You know, obviously, apart from build quality, ASIM is famous for this flashlight's build like a tank, looks like a tank, and overall this matte anodization feels so much premium than other manufacturers that just cannot be you know displayed on the video you have to fill it with your own hands first time in the history of ace beam uh, we've got this intelligent integrated handle that operates the flashlight fully there are no switches on the side of that so you cannot use it without the handle but it is perfectly integrated in the design and and well thought to be, you know, the control center at the push of your finger. Just like in the Moniker MK30, I emphasize that this is the right direction. And now ASBIM also incorporated this piece of equipment into their ASBIM X75. I think this flashlight has some flaws to it. Obviously, it's not perfect. But as far as it could be designed, I think this one is a hell of a job from ASBIM sides. And I really appreciate the effort because what they created is just outstanding. All right, so when it comes to competition to the ASIM X75, I think there are a couple of propositions that I'll show you right now. But uh, to be honest, there is no direct competition to this particular model, right? There is obviously the Emaland MS18 that is still unbeatable when it comes to a sheer output of 100,000 lumens. Uh, with 18 XHP 70.2 LEDs. Obviously, it cannot be compared to the ASBIM X75 with only 12 of them, but I have to admit that ASBIM is still coming closer and closer to the world record, and judging by the size, uh, well, there's no comparison here. ASBIM can still be quite comfortably, let's say, operated from one hand, but Imaland well, without the shoulder strap, you will have the pain in your bicep after like five minutes or, or something. And also quite noisy and cannot sustain the output quite well as Acebin does. Next, also the Emaland MS12 Mini, which is uh, their early release of the innovative cooling fan light again with a similar LED configuration and also same battery configuration. So I think this is the closer competitor you can get. Uh, but again, it is substantially smaller and uh, does not feature as high output as ASBIM does and also cannot sustain as much lumens as ASBIM does. Hmm, 
Then there is the Monker MK38 with uh, only 8 XHB 70.2 LEDs and the output of around 40,000 lumens. So, uh, well, but uh, substantially smaller and much more comfortable to hold due to the weight and uh, size distribution. Uh, don't you think that ASB might get influenced by the handle design from Monker? Hmm, interesting. Last but not least, there is the Asium X50, substantially smaller and uh, surprisingly at the really similar price points uh, with the dummy handle. Um, 45,000 lumens and again 8 XHB 70.2 LEDs. I uh, will show you in the beam shot section how those to compare, but as you can see the X50 looks like a little toy compared to X75 with this substantially smaller body and uh, without any cooling, uh, without the intelligent handle. Well, I'm really surprised that Ace Beam pushed the X75 at really similar price range, cannibalizing the X50 sales, in my opinion, quite substantially. Because if you really are not pushing for the flashlight to be as small as it is, there's no real good reason to buy X50 over X75 at this similar price range, right? The flashlight design is quite unique when it comes to cooling system, right? We've got those holes here to suck the air, the cold air, and also this one is kind of an open design here as you can see, it also suck air in here, pull it through by the fan to the heatsink and then remove the hot air through those holes up here so that the flashlight can stay nice and cool in this region and that the heat could stay just in the head section. The handle can be easily removed by unscrewing the two screws on the left side and the two screws on the right side with Torx key. There is this gigantic copper heatsink built into the head of the flashlight that is cooled by the fan from the underside. The handle and the fan looks like this. This can be detachable and user serviceable. As you can see, if you need to somehow replace the fan, you can do it. As you saw, you have the spur included in the package and if you need to replace it, just unscrew those two screws. Now we also know what the rectangular o-ring is for. A quick cooling fans comparison for you guys. Manker MK38, Imaland MS12 Mini, Azmu X75 and the Imaland MS18W. Why do I think that Ace Beam's cooling system is quite unique? While most manufacturers set their fans to blow on the side of their flashlight bodies to remove the heat, Ace Beam did it quite the opposite and blows directly to the head. Not only that, but also we do not have one particular setting of the fan, but it is intelligent temperature controlled. So depending on the temperature of the head itself, the fan can go really light, it can go in the middle setting, but it can also go full power depending on the cooling needs or the flashlight in that particular scenario. Let's hit the turbo output, fans are working. Now let's turn off the flashlight completely. Let's wait a bit. You can also turn them off manually by pressing the auxiliary switch once, and although the flashlight body still requires some cooling, you have the choice either to allow it or to stop it if you need silence in the woods. That's right. So let's turn on the flashlight in the higher mode. Let's say hi. As you can see, the flashlight does not require cooling yet, but if it does, it can turn on the fans in the lowest setting. Now increasing the speed to make it full power once you hit the turbo output.
flashlight still requires cooling, so when you hit the switch, even in the lowest setting, the flans will still go on. It's really a revolutionary concept. There is this silicon cover on the head of Ace Beam X75. Maybe you're wondering what it is for. First of all, it does feature an impact protection for the head, just in case you place it too roughly. Second thing is that it is a great heat insulator and because of the cooling fans and air duct system, the handle and the battery pack stays fairly cool, max 50-55 degrees Celsius, but the head can achieve as high as 70 even to 80 degrees Celsius. That's why you definitely don't want to touch the, the head accidentally and that's why there is this silicon insulate for. The third thing is that actually it does feature a visual indicator of the heat because this one is an intelligent material that changes the color while it achieves 55 or more degrees Celsius. Luckily, as it does not look that well, you can easily remove it and have the beautiful design of ASVIM X70, its full beauty. There are two switches that operate ASVIM X75. There is the slower main switch and the upper auxiliary switch. As you can see, the auxiliary one is larger than the main one, which is slightly counterintuitive for me in the first place. But when you think about it, actually, when you place your fingers on the handle, first things first, you got the lockout, mechanical lockout, which is brilliant. I'm really glad that they kept that way. It is the signature of Ace Beam right now. But once you engage it, you cannot press the switches physically because it blocks the travel of the switch. And when you unlock it, you definitely won't miss it. My main concern is that uh, in the era of electronic switches, most users will have problem to engage this switch sometimes, all right? It has fairly long travel before you engage it. And sometimes when you press it, just nothing happens and you might think it's malfunctioning. No, it isn't. It actually, you didn't press it fully. There is one click for on, one click for off. When the flashlight is off, you press the main switch to engage the ultra low mode, which is definitely not ultra low, but let's call it that way, all right? And then you hold the switch to cycle through low, medium one, medium two, high, low, medium one, medium two, high, etc. So then obviously double tap for turbo output and the fans already engaging. There is also triple click for strobe. All right, so let's move to the auxiliary switch, shall we? So the first main function that I find brilliant is that when the flashlight is on, you press it for a momentary turbo. Once you depress it, turbo is gone and you can hit it as many times as you can. The second function is actually uh, connected with the windy or non-windy mode is basically whether you like the fans to be operating or you want them completely off. So to switch between windy and non-windy mode, you hold the switch from off for three seconds and watch the indicator light. When it goes three times red, it means you've got non-windy mode, which is dangerous, not okay, all right? Red light and then press again for three seconds. You've got three green blinks, which means, okay, good, you are in the windy mode. And the third function of the auxiliary switch is actually changing between the power mode and eco mode, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, we've got brightness just decreased. So we've got from power to eco. Let's show you again. And the brightness just increase. So we've got from eco to power. There is the battery voltage indicator on the side wall of the flashlight. Whenever you turn the flashlight on, it will display the approximate battery voltage in three states, the green, red, and flashing red. There is this valve on the side of the Ace Beam X75. And to be honest, this is not a novelty from Ace Beam. It can be seen in the X50, X80, and probably a dozen other flashlights from this manufacturer. But people are wondering what it is for. Uh, well, I'm not sure because the manual does not say it, but I suspect that this is the valve for pressure that can get accumulated while the flashlight hits up in the driver section so that the hot air can have the way out of the flashlight. Showing you the battery pack here, the handle is the new design as seen in the Ace Beam X50 version 2.0. Provides a nice amount of grip, but also comfortable grip without too much 
harsh material on your hands. Everything looks perfectly smooth. The threads are not that long, but they do provide a good amount of resistance. Well lubricated as always. Here is the contact. Here is the driver of the Ace Beam X75, protected by this aluminum cover. Screws are again glued. So the reflectors are definitely slightly deeper than X50, but on the other hand, not as deep as, for example, Manker MK38. Uh, still, this flashlight provides a great amount of throw with this power uh, over 1300 meters. Uh, I get the impression that in this particular case, the, the flashlight body is still not pocketable. So why not increase the reflector size slightly to make it throw a little bit feather, but also decrease the blinding effect in front of you because of the sheer floody beam? Not sure about that. While official specs do not lie, you might not experience the full potential of this flashlight while you're holding it and shining in first person. The reason is because a lot of light is reflected right in front of you from the ground, your ability to see objects far away is slightly decreased. That's why it is recommended to go you know, with your friend and let him shine away object with the ASMX70 while you stand a couple of meters away from the source of light. Try it and please let me know in the comment section if you did experience much better impression when it comes to throwy beam of ASBIM X75. Here are my lumen measurements of the ASBIM X75 6500K version. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Alright, so here is the turbo runtime graph of the ASIM X75. This is a 6500K version, mind you, and windy mode, which means the internal fans are always working when they need to. As you can see, at start, I measured only 57,928 lumens, but as you know, this flashlight does ramp up a bit and it achieves the peak output at the 6 seconds mark. When I got the 76,635 lumens, which is a hair under declared 80,000 lumens. I would definitely accept that, all right? And then you've got the slowly output decrease to the around 67,839 lumens after the 90 seconds mark. And then we've got the nice steady step down to around 19,430 lumens, which is again really close to the declared 20,000 lumens after hitting 71 degrees, mind you, at the head section, all right? And then as you can see, we've got the perfectly flat output regulation over like uh, 21 minutes of steady 19,600 lumen level. I don't remember any other flashlight on the market right now that can do such things. And if you're wondering what it looks like when you turn off the fans, you can have it right here. So the first section of the runtime graphs actually looks the same, but the body temperature, it is slightly lower. It hits up to 65 degrees, not 71. And as you can see, we've had only around 7,000 lumens sustainable output without fans cooling instead of 20,000. And the overall runtime is also increased from 37 minutes to 1 hour and 6 minutes. Here is the high mode when it things got pretty interesting because the runtime graphs reminds me of the legendary TrueNet TN36 limited edition when the driver is being pushed to its limits and the user definitely cannot see any brightness decrease but in reality obviously it is happening. So again at start we've got fairly close to 20,000 lumens declared by the manufacturer and, and after 6 minutes and 8 seconds we still got over 17,000 lumens all right, before the slight step down to around 15,000 lumens and then after 21 minutes again slight step down to around 13,000 lumens due to active thermal regulation. So guys this is just unbelievable performance and mind you this is still with internal fan working but look at this runtime graph for the first 31 minutes we've got like ah oh, unbelievable amount of light coming out of this thing for comparison here is the high mode but with non-windy mode similar output at start but after five minutes mind you we still got over 18,000 lumens without any cooling all right mind you and then we step down to around 
5,940 lumens, around 6,000 lumens for around 1 hour and 10 minutes. And now the medium 2, uh, still the cooling fans enabled, all right, we've got perfectly flat, stabilized output, first one without any step down. It is advertised as 11,000, somehow I got 8,848 at start, and as you can see, we've got exactly one hour of sustainable 8,400 lumens, and the body did achieve 51 degrees Celsius. If you're wondering how it looks without any cooling fans, mind you, quite identical, because in this mode, the cooling fans are just engaging slightly to make it slightly cooler. You can barely hear them. And here the medium one, 4076 lumens at startup and we've got perfectly flat around 3900 lumens for 2 hours and 16 minutes at the body of flashlight achieving 46 degrees Celsius. All right and now the low mode uh, around 1733 lumens at start and perfectly flat 1700 lumens for around 5 hours and 9 minutes, flashlight body achieving 38 degrees Celsius. Last but not least, the ultra low. Here I measured around 730 lumens, which is lower than the declared 900 lumens, but overall I got also 2 hours extra runtime compared to the declared manufacturer rates.
So overall, guys, I couldn't be more excited about recommending you the Acebeam X75. This is this amazing flashlight with just outstanding performance and truly unique when it comes to search and rescue flashlights on the market right now. So definitely recommending this one to you, especially in this price point. So guys, if you like the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for more videos to come and to support the algorithm of this channel. I hope to deliver amazing reviews to you soon. So stay tuned. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. As always, guys, I try to answer all of them. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.